The gross examination always confirms what the microscopic, well, actually the microscopic confirms what you see grossly. And so I, I showed a heart of a female uh, that showed uh, scarring in the uh, myocardium uh, from a previous acute MI. And you can see here, here's the after result of a massive heart attack. Pre previously, the person had a heart attack uh, about 25 years ago. And you can see that most of the myocardium had been replaced essentially by scarring fibrosis. And you can see, still see some entrapped uh, uh, myocardial cells with enlarged uh, uh, nuclei within the myocytes. Uh, but this is uh, from chronic ischemic or heart disease. And you have this much of your left ventricular wall wiped out. It's very difficult not only to get the electro electrical signals to go through the heart, but uh, just imagine the actual pumping capability of the heart is much reduced. And so this is an example of uh, what a massive heart attack will look like even after surviving uh, the acute heart attack is a uh, severe scarring uh, with uh, near uh, almost null capability or very little capability of uh, functional uh, pumping action of the heart. So this was a severe heart attack, not an acute heart attack. This is to be di distinguished from an acute heart attack. This is a chronic uh, area or a scarring area of where a previous heart attack had existed. And uh, if I go down even closer, you can see what I was talking about with the enlarged uh, myocardial, uh, the nuclei of the myocardial cell being enlarged. Uh, th those are signs of also ischemic changes uh, of the heart. You can see that. And I think I may, if I can go over some, you'll see some actually uh, necrotic muscle cells. So necrosis mean uh, dead cells uh, while in uh, living organisms or living tissue or dying cells. Necrosis is what that is. But um, uh, now, now these myocytes here are all viable. When you see the nuclei in them, although they're enlarged, that's still um, viable myocardial tissue. And I want to go and show another example of how the grossing uh, correlates with the uh, microscopic. We're looking at the uh, unilateral ventricle, the left ventricle, and you can see there's significant scarring in this myocardial wall of the left ventricle. And the thickness is up to about 2.8 centimeter in maximum thickness. But I didn't see any evidence of acute myocardial infarction, but there's definitely scarring damage in this left ventricular wall, uh, mid apex almost. So here's a section of liver. I was thinking that it was a, a micronodular cirrhosis or at least a, a cirrhotic pattern in the liver. And you can see that this indeed, now you can see some microvesicular steatosis here uh, in the scarring liver tissue uh, from cirrhosis. But uh, that microvesicular could be either from alcohol uh, use or either uh, medication toxicity uh, that caused the uh, ultimate uh, scarring of this liver tissue. But in other areas, uh, Obviously, here is a portal tract. You can see there is a mixed inflammatory infiltrate consisting of both lymphocytes, plasma cells, histiocytes. And I think if you go down, you'll see occasional eosinophils, but that wasn't con the main component of the inflammatory infiltrate within the, uh, the portal triad. But you can see the bridging fibrosis from the one portal triad. There are some scarring to another portal triad. And uh, there's uh, some entrapped hepatocytes there as we continue to go around. So you see a my uh, moderate uh, microsteatosis, vesicular steatosis, and, um, and that's fatty change. Uh, there's a bile duct now, nice bile duct within uh, the portal triad. But I wanted to show also uh, there were areas of uh, neutrophilic abscess, a uh, microabscess within the uh, hepatic lobule. Uh, that's often a sign of, uh, here's a vein, a uh, central vein. Now that's still a portal triad. Uh, but some of the central veins also showed uh, scar and fibrosis. So that, to me, with the, uh, uh, and I, I don't see it in this area, but there was also piecemeal necrosis, of, of course. Uh, can't see it in this area. But that shows to me that there may have been some sort of active chronic hepatitis in this scarring liver disease, either from uh, 
alcohol. I, I really favor it to be alcohol, particularly given the uh, central vein uh, uh, fibrosis. Uh, but you can see that there is no doubt that this is a, a cirrhotic liver that I detected uh, when I was seeing the liver on gross examination. And with these two videos, I want to show uh, just for comparison how uh, what the gross look like for both the liver and the heart on these recent uh, autopsy that I performed. But it's good to see how grossing skills are, are very necessary uh, when uh, making accurate histological diagnosis. But there is no, um, no tumor here. This is all cirrhotic liver, which I think is either from alcohol use or a toxic medication. Okay, thank you for listening to the video. I'm gonna just go down so you can see real quickly because I like to see uh, be complete. And as I go in up and down for the focus, the histology is just absolutely beautiful from the lab that I'm using. These are what normal liver cells would be. Obviously, they're not normal because they're scarred in uh, the catechuli or the you know where you see the blood cells. I mean, uh, the vascular tissue in between the liver cells. And surprisingly, you don't see much in the way of biostasis there. I was hoping to show the, the, the component of neutrophils within the uh, lobules, but I don't see. Okay, just wanted to show this nice, beautiful histology as well. And here, uh, you can see that the liver has uh, some look like a, almost like a cirrhotic pattern. So we'll see what that is about. Uh, and, but the organs are intact. Uh,